The program of celebrations for the canonization of the two beatified Arabs, Mariam and Marie Alphonsine, was presented in a press conference. On May the 7th, Jerusalem celebrates the finding of Christ's cross following the solemn entrance into the Holy Sepulchre on the day before. The month of May is dedicated to Mary. We take you on a journey to her home in Nazareth, where devotion is balanced with the needs of the local community. The latest book by the Italian journalist Maurizio Molinari, the story of the self-proclaimed Islamic State and the threat it poses to the West. The Run for Unity race held in Bethlehem this year was organized by the Focolari movement. It is a worldwide relay for dialogue between all men and women. The Church of the Holy Land is excited about the upcoming canonization of two holy daughters of this land. There is one week left until the canonization ceremony for Blessed Marie Alphonsine Gattas and Mariam Boardi that Pope Francis will preside over on Sunday, May the 17th, in Rome. La santità parla arabo, sono arabi. Holiness speaks Arabic. They are Arabs. We are proud, but we are not the only ones who should be proud because holiness is universal. If they are holy, they are holy for all men and women, and their intercession is for everyone. Undoubtedly they will intercede in a special way for the Holy Land, and this is why we are going to Rome to celebrate and pray that they remember us, and they will. 700 people from the Holy Land will take part in the Mass at St. Peter's Square, and 800 Christians will come from Lebanon. For those who cannot be in Rome, a full program of events has been organized, which was presented in a press conference at the Christian Media Center in Jerusalem. Those present included Monsignor William Shomili and Father David Neuhaus from the Latin Patriarchate, Mother Ines Al-Yakub, the Superior General of the Sisters of the Rosary, the congregation founded by the Blessed Marie Alphonsine, Father Dobromir Jaztal, Vicar General of the Custody of the Holy Land, Melkite Bishop Jules Zere, and Father Peter Fellet, Secretary of the Assembly of Catholic Priests of the Holy Land. Starting on Saturday, May the 9th, Masses, Rosaries and Prayer Vigils will be held at the shrine dedicated to Mother Alphonsine in the Mamilla neighborhood of Jerusalem, at the Carmel Convent in Bethlehem founded by Mariam Bawardi and in her native town of Ibelin in Galilee. And then following the canonizations until November, Masses of thanksgiving will be celebrated for the new saints in every part of the Holy Land. This event is uh, joyful, it's a great event and it gives us hope and determination to continue her mission, to hold our cross with joy and uh, charity, to serve the people, love the people and that's it. Two women, two nuns, two Palestinians living in the second half of the 19th century. The soon-to-be saints, Mariam and Marie Alphonsine, gave themselves to the little ones and to the poor of their time, in and outside of the church. It is also seen as a sign that both bear the name of the Virgin Mary. It means that the, the, the lady, the woman, it's have their uh, turn in the, in the world. It's not a part. She can do everything, and she can be a saint, and she can do and uh, teach the people how to be a saint. Meditating on the suffering of Christ, the Christians of the Holy Land celebrate two feasts in the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre related to the cross. On May the 7th, the finding of the Holy Cross by Saint Helena, and on September the 14th, the exaltation of the Holy Cross. Both these events speak of the saving value of the wood of the cross on which Christ was hung. Todo o povo brasileiro da, da terra da Santa Cruz, a festa de Santa Cruz, seja a festa de hoje, seja no dia 14. For the Brazilian people, called the people of the land of the Holy Cross, today's feast and the one in September are very important, even though today's is not celebrated in Brazil or around the world. But I think the most important thing for us Christians should be our focus on the cross of the Lord, which is the door of life. Atenção se dirija à cruz do Senhor, que é, vamos dizer, a porta 
par à vida. En effet, c'est la première fois, je savais que cette fête existait dans le monde latin. En France, euh, eh bien, on ne, on ne le fait pas. It is the first time I hear about this feast in the Latin world. In France, we don't celebrate it. We know that St. Helena found the cross, so being in Jerusalem for several months, I have the good fortune of participating in this celebration and really immersing myself in the mystery of the cross today. During Vespers, I thought of this. We are saved through Jesus' cross. And it is really very important to have this sign in our midst. Et euh, c'est important que nous ayons que nous ayons ce signe euh, parmi nous. This year, on May the 6th, the square of the Basilica of the Holy Sepulchre is full of pilgrims. Even if they are not aware of what feast is being celebrated today, many groups have visited the holy place. At 3.30 p.m., the Franciscan friars with the Custos of the Holy Land, Father Pier Battista Pizzaballa, and the custodial vicar, Father Dobromir Jazdal, made a solemn entrance into the Basilica for the celebration of Vespers in the Grotto of the Finding of the Cross. When the discovery of Christ's tomb and of the true cross became public in the times of St. Helena, there were many fruits. Jerusalem was filled with pilgrims, for whom venerating Calvary and the tomb was the high point of their lives. It was a stimulus to revive and strengthen their own faith, a way to renew their longing for Christ. To this day, this feast is celebrated with the same devotion and the same love. A cruz nos tem que conduzir, tem que nos levar à ressurreição. Então, eu acho que esta é uma festa é, especialmente pascal. The cross should lead us to the resurrection, so I think this is a particularly pascal feast. It is a celebration of life, of resurrection. It is important to constantly remember that life is stronger than death. A, a ressurreição está ali. A vida está, a vida é mais forte do que a morte. Bueno, ha significado, la verdad, que um grande momento esta celebração poder participar aqui. It is my first time. I experienced this with great emotion and above all with great devotion because this moment reminded us of the cross with which Jesus has set us free. It was very emotional for me and I lived out this experience with joy. I prayed for all my loved ones and also for the work of the friars of the custody. On May the 7th, the commemoration continues with a mass celebrated in the Grotto of the Finding of the Cross. We adore you, Lord Jesus Christ, and we bless you, because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. In May, life returns after the long winter. During this month, around the world, the Church remembers Mary, Jesus' mother. In a special way, pilgrims to the site of the Annunciation in Nazareth come to remember an event that changed the course of history. The whole year in Nazareth is unique because of its special devotion to the Virgin Mary, its torchlight processions, its masses and the pilgrims passing through. But the month of May is special because even local Christians pray the Rosary every day and there is also a Mass that is well attended. The Basilica is full of people Many parishioners are celebrating the month of May together with the pilgrims who are passing through. Thinking about Nazareth and the Marian shrines of the Holy Land makes us think about those who take care of these places, the Franciscan friars of the Holy Land, and we also think about their charism. St. Francis thought up the Angelus, and we are right in the place of the Angelus. Here, in the grotto, at the site of the Annunciation, we friars minor pray the Angelus each day. It is a Franciscan tradition, the pearl of Franciscan tradition. The Angelus then spread throughout the world and throughout the church. The Franciscan friars minor take care of the most visited Marian shrines in the Holy Land, the Grotto of the Nativity and the Milk Grotto in Bethlehem, the Basilica of the Visitation in Ein Karim, the Basilica of the Annunciation in Nazareth and that of Nutrition. These places need help and support, especially the site of the Annunciation. The grotto is being restored. We can say that the restoration attempt has worked, but we must continue because it is very important to the place of the Annunciation. We can say that it is working, but we need help, not only for the grotto itself, but also for the presbytery of the basilica. 
In 2016, the Basilica of the Annunciation will host the World Day of the Sick, and in order to do this, we need to improve the elevator for the disabled. The Pro Terra Sancta Association, the NGO of the Custody of the Holy Land, launched a fundraising campaign this month for the Marian Basilicas. Please visit www.proterrasancta.org for information on the various ways of helping. We want to make the house of the Virgin Mary more beautiful, more homely, more of a place for pilgrims and local Christians, so that we can all feel welcomed in our mother's home. So help us. This is a call for help. The projects are there. The work is there. Help us. We are praying from here, but help us also with your prayer. They entered Sinjar. They took women. They took young people. They took children with the intention of selling them. Before they arrived, we escaped. I think that there is no hope and there is no future here. Especially like most of the people here are already running and traveling to Europe and just getting away from Iraq. So I'm also thinking about leaving. But The cry of Iraqi and Syrian refugees who fled from their homeland after the advent of the self-proclaimed Islamic State has gone around the world for nearly two years. Expressions like ISIS and Jihad pervade the media, often creating confusion on the terms in question. A new book entitled The Caliphate of Terror by Italian journalist Maurizio Molinari, Middle East correspondent for the newspaper La Stampa, sheds light on this new form of terrorism. The Caliphate is characterized by three features, the reference to the origins of Islam, namely to Bilad al-Sham, the great common land of the Arab peoples of the Middle East, an ideology centered on the use of absolute violence against enemies, Shiites, Christians, Jews and all Sunnis who do not think like them. And then the state project, the will to create a state with its functions and based on a good administration. It is this state dimension that distinguishes ISIS from Al-Qaeda, which was a traditional type of terrorist organization. Molinari's essay, published by Rizzoli, was recently presented at the Italian Cultural Institute in Tel Aviv. During the meeting, a historical overview of extremism within Islam was given by historian and journalist Paolo Mieli. The Caliphate has the goal of erasing the divisions that were created between Arab states at the end of World War I, in an agreement between English and French ministers. The entire Arab and Muslim world was divided up with a few pen strokes, putting together tribes and religious sects that had nothing to do with each other and creating essentially artificial states. With the excellent analytical and writing skills that characterize his work, Maurizio Molinari frames the phenomenon in its complexity and tragedy in less than 200 pages. Starting with the historical context, it's a journey through the most dramatic aspects of the Caliphate and ends by formulating the threat that the Islamic State, paraphrasing the subtitle of the book, is for the West and for the whole world. For the time being, the greatest number of people killed have been other Muslims of the Shiite branch. But they are also committed to carrying out their offensive in Rome. They say it on all their posters, in all of their statements, and they are committed to persecuting Christians and Catholics in a special way. There must be a European policy to combat radicalization. There must be a policy from a security point of view in order to stop the territorial expansion of the Islamic State in the Middle East. There must be a political solution. There must be a diplomatic compromise to end the war in Syria and to try to create the conditions to resolve the humanitarian crisis. History is accelerating. In the Middle East, states are disappearing. We are back to a tribal dimension of violence as well as cohabitation. For all of us, it is time to be humble, study and try to understand what is happening through a moment of collective reflection that absolutely must take place before making political decisions on what actions to take.
I came here to participate in the race because I believe in unity. We are all here so that there may be unity among brothers and so that we get to know each other. Angelina is one of 300 young girls and boys between the ages of 10 and 16 who participated in a race that took place on May the 3rd in the Palestinian territories. The race was six kilometers long and it began in Manger Square in Bethlehem, in front of the Basilica of the Nativity. Bethlehem is a place that speaks about peace. It is the place of the birth of Jesus who brought a message of love and peace that is still valid today. Bethlehem too, along with many cities around the world, wants to send out a message of peace to the world and to the Middle East in the name of all the countries where there is suffering and war. The event in Bethlehem was attended not only by young people from throughout the Holy Land, but also by many foreigners. Run for Unity, in fact, is a worldwide initiative sponsored by the Focolari movement, inspired by the Golden Rule that states, do not do to others what you do not want to be done to you. The organization put on a race that from the Fiji Islands through 140 countries on all five continents, brings a message of peace and solidarity, and brings together young people of different races, cultures and religions. The race is organized by the Focolari movement, an international Marian movement that is focused on peace and brotherhood among peoples. The race takes place every three or four years. In 2005 it was in Jerusalem, in 2008 it was in Haifa, in 2012 in Caesarea, and this year for the first time it's taking place in Bethlehem, up to Kremizan through Beit Jala. Uh, Bethlehem, Another significant detail this year was the end point of the race, the Cilician Monastery in the Kremizan Valley. Here, the non-violent struggle of the local people prevented the construction of a section of the separation wall between Israel and the Palestinian territories. Let us search for the peace for which Jesus came. He is peace. We want to help the children who walk with us to feel that they have a role and responsibility. This place shows young people that they play an important role in their own future. دور للشبيبة تبعون المستقبل. We are here to tell you about the Holy Land, to raise awareness and visibility of the Mother Church of Jerusalem, local Christians and holy places. We are here to tell so many forgotten stories of daily efforts, courage and faith. We are here to promote hope in the land of God. Support those who give a voice to custody of the Holy Land's work.